The aim of this problem is to find the power associated with the voltage and current source using node voltage method. Node voltage method is a powerful circuit analysis technique which has five main steps which are shown here. So let's see how we can systematically apply these five steps to solve the circuit. So this given circuit has one independent voltage source, one independent current source and three resistors. The first step is to identify essential nodes in the circuit. Recall that an essential node is a node where three or more circuit elements join. If we look at this conductor here, this is where four circuit elements are joining. So this is an essential node and we can indicate that by drawing a node here. Similarly, this top conductor is where four circuit elements are joining. So this is an essential node. If you look at this point, here two circuit elements are joining. So this is a node, but it is not an essential node. Step two is select one of the essential nodes to be a reference node. In this example, we're going to make this node a reference node and this is indicated by the ground symbol. Step three is apply Kirchhoff current law to the remaining nodes. In this example, there is only one remaining node. So let's indicate the, no the voltage at this node as V1. In order to apply Kirchhoff current law, first we need to denote the branch current directions. A systematic way of doing that is to assume all branch currents are leaving the node. So at this node, we have four branch currents and we can set them all as leaving the nodes. Kirchhoff current law says the sum of currents leaving a node is equal to the sum of currents entering a node. So now we are ready to write the node equation at this node one. So looking at this branch current through the 10 ohm resistor, we can use Ohm's law to write the term for this branch current. So following the direction of this branch current, we write voltage at this end minus voltage at this end divided by the resistance. So this branch current is V1 minus zero because the voltage at the reference node is assumed to be zero divided by 10. Let's look at this branch current. So we follow the direction of the assumed branch current. The end where the reference current enters is higher potential and the end where it leaves is lower potential. So this branch current is V1 minus zero over 40. Let's look at the third branch current. So this branch current, in this branch, we actually have a current source. So the, cur the value of the current must be equal to the magnitude of the current source. Our assumed branch current direction is opposite to the current source direction. So what we get is minus three. This last branch current, so voltage at this side is node voltage V1. And what is the voltage here? At this point, we have a 50 volt DC voltage source connected between this point and ground. So that means the voltage here is 50 volts. So this branch current can be written V1 minus 50 over five. We have four branch currents leaving the node and there is no branch current entering the node. So this is the equation that we get by applying Kirchhoff current law to node one. 
Step four is solving this equation. So this is a single equation with one unknown variable and we can easily solve it by hand. So we can collect the terms that have V1 on one side. And then we can move the other terms to the other side. So this is equal to three plus 50 over five. And this gives, this so that means the node voltage is 40 volts the last step is to solve for the required circuit variables in this case we have to find the power associated with the voltage source and the power associated with the current source so let's first look at the power associated with the uh, 50 volt voltage source so the power is the product of the voltage so the voltage is 50 volts this is the magnitude of the voltage source and then this current this is the branch current flowing through the voltage source so its value is given as voltage at this side v1 40 minus voltage here 50 over 5 and then we have to apply passive sign convention to determine the sign so we can see that the assumed current is entering the terminal marked plus so we write the power calculation with a positive sign so if we simplify this, we get 50 multiplied by, this is minus two. So this is equal to minus 100 watt. The final answer is negative, which means the voltage source is supplying power to the circuit. Let's have a look at the current source. So the power, associated with the current source is the voltage drop across this current source is actually node voltage v1 and because node voltages are defined as a positive voltage rise with respect to ground we can associate this polarity of the voltage drop with the current source so the current source is the voltage, which is V1, multiplied by the current, which is 3 amp, and applying passive sign convention, the current is entering the terminal marked negative. So we write the power calculation with a negative sign, and this gives us minus 120 watt. So this shows that the current source is also supplying power in this circuit. Next, let's see what happens if we made a different choice for the reference node. So suppose we assumed this as the reference node, and then this is the remaining node where we apply Kirchhoff current law. So let's, let's assume this node voltage to be V2 and now apply Kirchhoff current law. So we assume all branch currents are flowing away from this node. Now let's apply Kirchhoff current law to this node. Looking at this branch current, the, the, the term would be voltage on this side minus voltage on this side divided by resistance. So we're applying Ohm's law. So this will be V2 minus zero over 10. For the branch current in this 40 Ohm resistor, the term will be V2 minus 0 over 40. 
this branch current this branch has a current source so this current has to have the same value as the magnitude of the current source and we can see that this branch current is in the same direction as the current source so this branch current is 3 amps we have one branch current remaining what to do here well we cannot apply ohm's law to the 50 volt voltage source because we don't know the this branch current so actually here we can use a simple trick to help us write the branch current expression since the voltage source and the 5 ohm resistor are in series they have, will have the same current so we can actually swap their position and that helps us write the branch current expression so this branch i can actually redraw as i can swap the position of the voltage source and the 5 ohm resistor and this is v1 and this is sorry this is the volt node voltage v2 and this is 50 volts now i can apply ohm's law to this resistor so it's voltage at this side which is v2 minus voltage at this side and the voltage here is minus 50 volts because we have this voltage source connected between ground and this point so this is v2 minus minus 50 over 5 and this is equal to 0. next we can solve this equation to find the node voltage so same as before we can collect the terms with V2 on one side and we can move the other terms to the other side and this gives minus 13 so that's 3 plus 10 and it becomes minus 13 when moved to the other side so this gives So in this case, V2 is minus 40 volt. So we can see that if we assume a different position for the reference node, the magnitude of the node voltages will be different. Let's see whether it affects the power calculations or not. So let's look at the power associated with the voltage source. So the power associated with the voltage source will be voltage which is 50 multiplied by the current and the current is this is the branch well the value of the current so this will be minus 40 plus 50 over 5 so this is equal to so this is the branch current and now we have to apply a passive sign convention so this branch current is entering the terminal marked negative so we have to have a minus sign with the power calculation and if you evaluate this this comes out minus 100 watt same as before similarly the power associated with the current source so now the voltage drop across the current source is V2 and since V2 is a positive voltage rise we can associate this polarity of the voltage with the current source. So the power associated with the current source is the voltage V2 which is minus 40 multiplied by the current which is 3 amps. And we can see that this current is entering the terminal marked plus. So we write the power calculation with a positive sign, applying passive sign convention. 
and this gives us minus 120 watt same as before so the conclusion here is the the value of the node voltage will depend on the position of the reference node but in terms of power calculations it does not have any impact and you get the same answer finally we can check our answer by simulating the circuit in pspice so here we have placed the ground at the bottom node and we can see that the node voltages and currents are exactly as we calculated. This confirms our solution.